Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. Excel's choose function is a lookup function, but unlike VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP, most people don't seem to know it's there. The general idea is you create a list of values, then specify which member of that list you want to return. And of course, you can nest the choose function inside other functions. So let's take a look, see how it works. Here's a simple example of where we might use the choose function. On the left side of the spreadsheet, we have a small data area, and you can see we have nine states, simply listed number one to nine, and we have the name and the population. What we want to do in the little box down column E is put in the index number of one of the states, and then in the two colored boxes, we get the name of the state and the population pop out. Simple enough, right? Well, before we do that, let's look at the syntax of the choose function. It's pretty straightforward. We say equals choose, open up the parenthesis, and there's, I'll call it two arguments. The first argument is what the index number is, and then the second argument, or the second through the two possible 256th uh, item, is what the members of the list are. So in the example that we have, there's going to be nine of them, right? So there's going to be state number one through state number nine, and then we simply use the index number to say, okay, which one of those nine do we want? So let's go do it. I'm going to click there in cell E5, and I'm going to say equals choose, open the parenthesis, and you see it gives us the little syntax, so I'm going to say there's that index in E4, comma, and now I need to put the values. And I'm going to start with the state names. So there's the first one, comma, second one, comma. Rhode Island is the last one. Close the parenthesis, press enter, and it tells me New Jersey, right? Because there's number one, and that's already that index number. Now let's do the same thing for the populations. Equals choose, open the parenthesis, there's that index number, comma, and now we do the populations. There's the last one. Close the parenthesis and enter. And we see there's the population for New Jersey. Okay, so now all I have to do is click in there and say, all right, well, maybe I want to see the info for state number four. Enter that. Maybe I want to see the info for state number seven. And so on. Now, we don't have to type that in. If you want, you could put a drop down list there. Or that could be the result of another calculation that's happening somewhere else. It doesn't have to be an input number. But what happens if we put in an index number that's not in that list? Let's say I want to find state number 12, whatever that's going to be. Well, then it gives us some errors. So we can go and fix this. Let me just set that back to maybe something that does exist so we don't see those errors. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to double click on the one for the state, and I'm going to take the entire choose function, and I'm going to nest it inside the if error function. The if error function will let you create a custom error handling. And here's how that works. Say equals if error, open set of parenthesis, and there's two arguments. The first argument is what is the formula that you want to evaluate? And this example we're doing uh, here, that formula is the entire choose function. And the second argument is, what do you want to return if that formula evaluates to an error? Now, if that formula doesn't evaluate to an error, then the FR function is just going to put in that formula. So let's go do that. So I'm going to click before the opening of that choose function. I'm going to say, if error, I'm going to open up a parenthesis. The first argument is this entire choose function. So at the closing of that parenthesis, I'm going to put in a comma, and I'm going to open up a double quotation mark, because if you're going to put text inside a formula, the text has to be in double quotations, otherwise Excel doesn't know what to do with it. So if this choose function evaluates to an error, I'm going to say just something like not found. 
close quotes, close a parenthesis, and let's do that with a population. So before opening the choose function, I'm going to say if error, open the parenthesis, the choose function itself is the first argument, is that a value to an error, comma, if so leave it alone, if not, let's open up quotes and again say not found, close a quote, close a parenthesis, enter. So if I choose state number five, that's not a problem, but if I choose state number 20, then they both say not found. Looks like there's a little bit of extra space after there, and that's just a formatting issue. I'm just going to click on this first one here, hit the Format Painter, click on the second one, and now the formatting is consistent. There are all sorts of cool things you can do with the Choose function. Do you have a way of using it you'd like to share? Drop me a note and let me know. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets.